We are yet again returning to the AST Advantage 8100P. If you watched the previous videos on this machine, you'll know it's one that has an extra nostalgic place for me, basically being a computer I had when I was younger. You'll also know it's quite a capable Windows 95 and DOS gaming machine. That said, with the right upgrades, it can do more. A lot more. Welcome back to Rick's Ren Retro, where we kick things into overdrive. As a quick refresher, this machine is currently equipped with a Pentium 100 MHz processor, a 1 MB onboard S3 video card, and a Sound Blaster Vibra 16 sound card. Let's take a look at some upgrades. Up first we have our Intel Pentium Overdrive processor. This is actually a direct replacement, and uh, Intel launched a lot of these processor upgrades in the mid-90s uh, to give people a way to kind of get a quick upgrade. It actually lets you remove the old processor and slot this directly in. Um, the fan out also is interesting because it's actually powered from the socket, so it has a little connector on the edge there. Uh, but these processors are very popular as a way to kind of extend your machine, and this is the 166 megahertz with MMX technology pension processor, which actually just replaces our Pentium 100 processor uh, directly. So we just basically are going to take out our old processor and put uh, this one in its place. And these fan shrouds are a little hard to get back on here, but this should provide quite a quite a good boost for our machine. And not only uh, bumping the processor speed by 66 megahertz, but then also adding up MMX technology. Next up, we have a Sound Blaster AW64 Value Edition, a uh, card that's I think pretty popular for uh, Windows 95 and uh, 98, and also DOS machines, just from a pure compatibility standpoint. It uh, can run just about everything, I think, and it's got pretty good uh, sound. So, it may not be the best card around, but it's really um, good quality and everything. So. And as an added bonus, uh, when I bought this card, it actually came with the driver disc and extra floppies and a whole bunch of extra goodies that uh, I may end up using for this here, including some extra sound fonts and uh, driver upgrades and everything. So, um, nice little extra bonus there. No box, unfortunately. Obviously, no computer upgrade is complete without actually upgrading the video card as well. This is an S3 Verge uh, card that's about the same model that we have in the computer right now. It's a little newer, but above all, it's got 4 megabytes of memory that will allow us to run at higher resolutions. Right now we're kind of limited to a low resolution on the uh, computer, like 800 by 600, so this should let us run, uh, you know, higher, 1024, etc. So, secondly, we have a Voodoo 2 card. Obviously this machine would be better suited with a Voodoo 1 card, but uh, you got to kind of use what you have on hand. This card should uh, give us quite a, quite a boost in graphic performance, enabling all the Glide uh, games and everything. This is the Creative model with 12 megabytes on board. Um, I said we're going to have a little bit of a problem with DOS compatibility maybe, but I'm not too worried. Above all, it will let us run all our uh, Glide Windows games just fine, really fast. Sadly, I don't have a second card for SLI, but uh, you know, you got to start somewhere, so. So sadly, while this computer came with several hard drives already, they all failed. One after another. That's a problem with several decades old mechanical storage. They will eventually fail. Thus bringing us to the next upgrade, which is an SD to IDE card adapter. This adapter allows the computer to use an SD card as a direct replacement of an IDE hard drive. Now I know that in theory, a compact flash adapter based device is quicker, but it's also limited by an older, pretty slow IDE bus. What this does bring are some pretty big convenience features, plus readily available storage. If it ends up faster, all the better. So with that said, let's go ahead and install some upgrades. So it's a little hard to get this on uh, camera, so I'm just going to put the case down and do it from the bottom here so you can actually see the expansion slots. Of course, this is the general area we're going to be working with. So uh, first off, uh, we're going to remove the old sound card here, the Soundmaster 16 Vibra. So let's go ahead and get that out of there. The CD audio cable is a little tricky to get loose here, so we'll just go ahead and uh, take the card out first and then get the cable out. comes right out and that's a lot easier to, to get a hold and actually pull this cable out so there we go out with the old and in with the new here's our Soundmaster uh, AW64 value edition and go ahead and plug the CD audio cable right back in makes a lot easier if you do that before you plug it in although you can do it obviously after you uh, connect it so goes here in one of our ISA slots, obviously, right back where the old Soundbuster 16 Vibra card was. And we're 
go ahead and get that tightened up again here. Next we're going to go ahead and make some room for our two uh, video cards. One obviously being the S3 Verge expansion card, and then the next being the Voodoo 2 card. So we'll need two slots for that. And whoops, you didn't see that. And before we do that, we're actually going to go ahead and replace the processor here with our overdrive upgrade. First, we have to actually get the old processor off, and with some excessive force, let's get that old uh, heatsink and processor out. Cool and Pace is actually causing this heatsink to get stuck to the processor, so we'll just take out the whole thing in one piece. So, out goes our uh, old processor, a little fuzzy there, unfortunately, and in goes our overdrive processor, where actually slots right into the same spot, no problem at all. Actually, should be no problem. Uh, make sure all the pins are aligned. There's only one way it can go in. So, uh, even though it's supposed to be a zero insertion force, we'll use a little bit of force to get it in. So, the lever doesn't quite close all the way, but the process should make a connection just fine. It, it's definitely in there, so we're going to leave it like this. There we go. Next, let's uh, return our focus to the video cards. First being the very long Voodoo 2 cards, which of course takes up a massive amount in this uh, expansion slot here. Uh, by far the longest card in this computer, for sure. Uh, fortunately, this computer doesn't need a ton of cooling uh, compared to newer machines, so it should be fine. And actually, I misjudged which PCS slots uh, we actually need, so the uh, slot I opened up earlier is actually one of the ISA slots, so... I'm going to have to move another uh, bracket out of the way and install our S3 uh, Verge upgrade card here. Getting the uh, CD audio cable out of the way. It can be a little tricky. Normally you'd install this uh, upside down, if you will. I have it laying down on my desk here so you can get a better view. It's a little hard to get a camera shot from all the top of this tower, so. That's installed, but of course, uh, we might as well put the old bracket back here, so we actually tighten this computer up completely. Aesthetics are important, as is airflow. There we go. And lastly, what we have left here now is our IDE to SD card adapter. We actually plug straight into the IDE ribbon cable like this. And it needs to be powered by a floppy connector or a full uh, uh, hard drive connector or CD-ROM drive connector. So I'm going to do that here. There we go. Uh, I had attached this properly, but for now, uh, just to get this machine up and running and set it right here, should be fine. There's nothing moving, so should be just fine. Now, to make our Voodoo 2 card usable, we need a VGA bypass cable. All that really does is that it lets the primary video card, in our case our upgraded S3 card, handle normal video until the Voodoo is called upon. When that happens, we'll take over the video signal, providing us with that 3D accelerated goodness we do crave. One end of the cable simply goes into the S3 video out, and one goes into the Voodoo 2 in port. Then from the Voodoo 2, the monitor is connected, thus providing us the whole bypass solution. Now I mentioned that the Voodoo 2 is kind of like an overkill for this machine, and unfortunately that proved to be the case. I simply could not get this Voodoo 2 card to work and play nice with this computer. So I ended up switching to my Voodoo 1 Righteous 3D card that I've actually had since it was new, and that ended up working a lot better, so see you later. So imagine that this is the card we're actually installing here. So booting this guy up, one of the first things I had to deal with was the ID to SD card adapter which we can see here it's actually detected, however, it did not find all the settings for it. I actually had to take the ID card adapter and put it in a more modern computer with a more modern BIOS. This computer is old and it has an outdated BIOS, I can't find an updated one. So, plug it into the other computer, I was able to get all the cylinder information, all the heads, all the sectors, and all the manual configuration needed to make this work. All the configuration would not work. But this brings me to the 16 gigabytes of space that's freely available to use now, so. 
And here on the next screen, we can see the new processor upgrades. I've shown only 66 megahertz, but we're gonna take that as a display issue and just move along and then see what it actually reports as later on. So the machine looks good in general, so we're gonna go ahead and continue and boot it up. I went ahead and installed Windows 95 and installed most of the drivers I had. Actually, the uh, floppy disk that came with the SoundMaster card came in handy, so you never know when you're gonna need it. Anyway, you've seen enough driving installations in the past. There's nothing exciting here, just Voodoo drivers, uh, all the drivers needed for all the upgrades and everything. And you're like, well, great, where are the games? I wanna see some before and after, right? So, well, let's hop right into that instead. The first game we have is Pod, a racing game that came out in 1997 that was trying to use the then new technology of MMX from Intel. Uh, our processor here at 100 megahertz without MMX, however, can barely run this game. As you can see, it's just incredibly choppy, near unplayable, uh, abysmal frame rates, and the audio stuttering. Um, you know, you, you might have been able to play it like this, but uh, you sure would not have been having a good time at all. It's, uh, it's pretty awful. And just as a comparison, I ran in the lowest resolution possible with the lowest details possible as well, which makes the game, you know, decently playable, but it looks just awful. So let's see if it looks any better after we put our upgrades in. And this becomes apparent pretty quickly here, it's much improved. The game runs smoother, there's less audio chopping, if any at all, and the controls are much, much more responsive. Sure, it's not, you know, your six, silky smooth 60 FPS here now uh, when there's a lot of other cars in the view, but as we're pulling away from them, the game gets even faster and it's using every ounce of that MMX enhanced technology. Uh, certainly, this is a more than acceptable way to play this game, and especially now it's super smooth, so uh, yeah, a well worth upgrade. Another game I wanted to showcase is Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight. Also released in 1997, I guess it was a good year. We could run here in software mode. Again, reminded this is before the upgrade, and we don't have a 3D accelerator on board, which kind of limits our options. This certainly would have been a way to play the game, but the view screen is so small, uh, even though it's smooth, it certainly is far from an optimal experience. So let's check out the difference after we add a 3D accelerator to the mix. Now this is pod racing. I mean, sorry, wrong game. Anyway, now with our Voodoo card installed, we see a dramatic increase in graphical options and fidelity. The game is much smoother to play, letting all the uh, heavy lifting being done by the Voodoo card, the CPU has cycles left over other things, again, resulting in a much smoother experience. It's hard to describe exactly how much better this game plays, but it feels much better. And also, if you noticed, besides me yabbering on, the Sound Blaster AW64 card is coming into play here, providing us a little more 3D positional audio compared to the Sound Blaster 16 card. All in all, quite the upgrade, and this is definitely a way I would have enjoyed this game back in the day. Also speaking of that AWE64 upgrade, here's the classic MIDI Canyon.mid before... ...and after. Quite a difference. Hear that one more time. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of other sound cards out there that are going to be a lot better than the EW64, but for my money, I think it's kind of a good all rounder card. It works great in DOS and works great in Windows, and for me, the sounds is actually pretty good. Also, as many of you that have messed with Voodoo 1 cards maybe know, there's an actual relay in the video card to switch over the inputs. So when you activate it, you get a nice click. And likewise, when you deactivate it, another click. 
So then, final thoughts on these upgrades. As I'll show some clips here of a variety of games, the computer now can do a lot more than it could before, and I feel it's been taken to a very sweet spot from mid-90s games, where the later DOS games as well as early 3D accelerated titles hang out. That's the advantage of having an original Pentium in the 166 to 200 MHz range, but personally for me, I think it's just about perfect. Fast enough to handle the more demanding titles at very smooth frame rates, but still retain near full compatibility with a lot of DOS games. Granted, this will be way too fast for some of the speed-sensitive titles, but that's not the real focus for this machine. And again, this is a special machine for me, so I really enjoyed upgrading it in ways I wasn't able to when I had it originally. This will likely now be my go-to mid-90s gaming machine. So, with that, we'll end this three-part series that did end up longer than I thought, but hopefully you've enjoyed watching it as much as I've enjoyed making it. So with that, thanks for watching, and until next time.